Do you own an RV? Does your RV have a screen door that leaves you feeling defeated, humiliated, or despised? Well then stay tuned because I've got just the solution for you. Well, on a more serious note, I am certainly thankful to have a screen door on my RV. You know, it's uh, really a necessity on most camping trips to keep the bugs out. And these screen doors, they can be found on virtually every towable RV on the market. I mean, over the last decade, there's been almost really no innovation whatsoever on this particular component in the, the RV world. Uh, well, maybe outside a, a one RV brand I can think of, that being Lance, some of their units have that more Euro style door and then a retractable screen. But uh, really the point I'm trying to make is the RV screen door, it's pretty much the same whether you've got an entry level towable or even a, a custom six figure fifth wheel. And the frustration comes in two parts, at least for me. And the first is that most RVs have a nice window on the outer door. And then many like mine have a built-in privacy shade on that door, which is a great feature, but the, the execution leaves something to be desired because the access to that shade is completely blocked by the screen door. Let me just say, if you know, you know, I mean, the, the process of opening and closing that privacy shade is all but graceful. Uh, first, you gotta slide open the screen door access panel, then you've gotta open your entry door, then you release the screen door from the entry door, then you gotta activate your go-go gadget arms and either reach through the tiny screen door access panel or you kinda have to <laughs> rappel off the steps, almost like you're descending off a cliff while you're fighting that swinging screen door and hope that you don't fall off the steps in the process. And, you know, I'm obviously exaggerating a little bit, but uh, if you have an RV like mine with a screen door, with a built-in window, with the window shade, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then the second point of frustration for me, at least, is the, the sliding access panel that's on the actual screen door. And I know it's a, a simple sliding panel, right? <laughs> it just slides from left to right, but it, it sticks out in the hallway. You know, I find myself constantly sliding it one way and then the other. It's like the panel's never left in the right spot. And then of course there's two sets of handles or levers to grab plus a deadbolt. And I don't know about you, but sometimes my brain just isn't firing on all cylinders. And I, I find myself fumbling to get out of the RV. It's almost like I'm having to solve a puzzle to get out each time. And so the screen door has always been a frustration point for me. Again, I am grateful for the screen door, but it just seems like there could be a better way to, to do all this. And so I've actually thought long and hard about it. I think my my dream setup would be a full-sized retractable screen door that you know just kind of slides across when you need it and otherwise it's out of the way. But I've looked into them and the only problem is uh, with one of those retractable sliding screens is that the, the frame or the housing, it's not compatible with steps that fold into your RV. And so because RVs have done away with those conventional step wells, remember those where you had a, you know, steps that retracted onto the outside of your RV. Uh, it seems like nowadays, you know, RV brands, they've shifted more to the drawbridge style steps that fold up into your RV when they're not in use. And so that actually leaves some hardware down on the, the floor, uh, just inside your opening. I've actually got the Torque Lift Glow Step Revolution Uprising model, which are not drawbridge style steps, but because my RV came with the Moride Step Above originally, I've got no step well underneath my RV. And so these steps, they still fold into my RV, which leaves some, some hardware that would interfere with a retractable screen door. Uh, plus, I'll also mention those retractable screen doors, they're kind of a pricey. They're uh, usually around $300 to $400 for an RV. And so that kind of got me thinking. I had previously seen magnetic screen doors, or, or really I should call it a, a screen panel, that are designed for houses, you know, for uh, maybe a rear patio door or just another door where you want to leave it open, you know, keep the bugs out. but maybe you don't want a full-fledged traditional screen door. Maybe you don't need the, the screen door year round, or maybe you're an infrequent user of the screen door to begin with. And so having a, a magnetic screen panel that's removable yet functional, it might be the way to go. And, and so I began to explore the possibility of using one of those same screen panels here on my RV. 
It turns out that I have a 30 inch RV door and the magnetic screen panels that are designed for houses just so happen to fit my RV opening perfectly and literally perfectly. I mean, both on the width and the height. And so I decided to try one of these for the RV and in the remainder of the video, I'm going to go through the install details and then talk about the pros and cons. Now I gotta admit up front, this is not the most elegant solution. And really I, I still think a retractable screen door would be better long-term. But I'm gonna give this a try, this setup for a while and, and see how I like it. And the good news is if, if I don't like this magnetic screen panel, everything that I'm showing you today can be undone. And if carefully, you can undo all this without damaging your RV. You know, I can put everything back together how it was originally with the clumsy screen door. That is if I don't like this, this setup. So let me show you the install details, which by the way, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. I sure appreciate that. But starting with the install first, of course I had to remove my old screen door, which is super easy. Mine just has four hinges with two screws each. So a total of eight screws, definitely save those screws, but the old screen door is going to come right off and I'll come back later and secure the remnants of the hinges. Then as far as picking a magnetic panel, there are a ton of them available in the Rainforest, I mean on uh, Amazon. They're all different sizes. I'll put an affiliate link to the one that I purchased if you're interested. So I appreciate you using those to support the channel. But the, the one I got, it's a 30 inch model and it actually measures 32 wide by 81 tall, which is absolutely perfect for my RV. Now it attaches to the sides and top of your door with Velcro, specifically the hook side of the Velcro goes on your frame and then the loop side is built into the screen panel. And most of them like mine here, they include the hook Velcro with the adhesive on the back. But in my case, the location where I wanted to mount the Velcro, which is around the, the sides of my door casing, it's narrower, and so I actually bought some half inch wide Velcro separately to supplement, but you may not need to do that depending on your RV. So after I verified the placement of the screen panel and where the ends would fall, I came back, I wiped down the surface with an alcohol pad, and then I actually installed the hook side of the Velcro separately. Now, depending on your RV, it may be more common that you're installing the Velcro on a flat surface you know, the same plane as the screen panel. And in that case, you just attach the Velcro on the screen panel first, and then use the panel as a guide as to, you know, where to adhere the Velcro. But because in my situation, I'm adhering the hook side of the Velcro to the outer edge of my door casing, my situation is a bit different. And that's why, again, I went with the half inch Velcro. I mean, it fits perfectly along the edge of my door casing. And really with the dark wood, it's, it's very discreet. You can barely tell it's there. And, and that's another thing that I like about this solution is it doesn't take away from the aesthetics when the screen panel is not in use. Then at the top of my door, again, the size, it just worked out perfectly. I put the, the hook side of the Velcro right along the bottom lip of my, my nice uh, header trim here, and it just blends in. Now, remember all this Velcro, it is pressure sensitive, meaning you will need to, to roll it out and apply pressure for the adhesive to stick properly. And I just use the, the handle of my, my scissors. And literally within 10 to 15 minutes, I was done. I mean, basically once the Velcro is adhered to your frame, you just attach the screen panel. It's got the loop side of the Velcro, of course, built into it. And for me, it seemed like it was easiest to start at the top and then work my way down. Now, the first time I attached it, I quickly realized that you don't wanna pull the screen too tight edge to edge as you're fastening the Velcro, because otherwise the magnets won't connect along the, the entry seam. And so I left just a little bit of slack there, but really uh, attaching it's pretty straightforward. Then at the bottom of my door, depending on what step system you have, you may have to improvise a little bit where the Velcro attaches. You can see my glow steps, they have a larger bracket that almost angles out at the bottom on both sides. Whereas I had the, the more I'd step above previously with the strut assist, and I think it only had a box on one side. I'm pretty sure the other side was mostly flat. But you can see in my setup here, I just came back, I put the hook side of the Velcro on the step bracket for the panel to secure to. And I mean, check out just how tight the bottom of the screen panel falls against the floor by the threshold. I mean, that is about as perfect as you can get. Well, let me demo it for you so you can see what it looks like going in and out. And I forgot to mention that I, I picked a screen panel with an offset opening. 
mainly because I figured if I ever leave the panel in place, uh, then the opening lines up with the door handle, so I'm not struggling to, to reach it. But basically with the magnets along the slit, you just walk right through it. I mean, you can use your hand and kind of push it out of the way, or if you want to be stealth, you can just you know bust right in and out each time. The magnets on the opening, they do a pretty good job of shutting automatically. I would say probably 95% of the time it went shut on its own without me assisting it. Uh, the, uh, the only problem I encountered is at the bottom 12 inches or so, because my panel isn't hanging straight due to the, the step brackets that are kind of angled down there, the bottom section didn't always close on its own. Sometimes I had to push it together down there. And of course that might be different for you if you've got a different bracket for your steps. But I mean, going in and out, it's a breeze. I'm right at six foot, two and three eighths inches tall. And you can see I duck just a little, really going out mainly. But I like how the, the view is more unobstructed with the screen panel. You know, it's not blocked by that opaque center sliding panel that was on the old screen door. And as far as sealing up the opening against bugs, I'd say that it's gonna do as good of a job as the old screen door, if not better. Why better? Well, I say that just because when you're going in and out with the magnetic screen panel, the entire screen isn't opening each time. It's just the slit. And then of course it automatically closes up, you know, even if your, your kids forget to, right? And so really it might actually be better at keeping the bugs out in the end. All right, well, let me mention a few more details to finish out the project. First is, what do you do with the remains of the four hinges from the old screen door? You know, how they're attached to the, the main hinges of the door. And for me, I just took some of the same Velcro, put a little square behind each one to keep them from swinging out, you know, inadvertently, super easy. And again, I'm leaving them attached in the unlikely event that I want to revert back to the old screen door in the future. Then you can also remove the, the small little clasp that was attached to your entry door to catch the screen door. I took mine off for now and I just filled the holes. But again, definitely save those small parts in case you want to revert back. And then last detail I'll mention is you'll notice the big gap here in my door frame between the door and the inner casing. And that void is entirely where the screen door used to be. Now you can leave it just like this because the door actually, it seals up with a lip on the outside of the RV. And so this brushed weather stripping that remains, it's really more what sealed the screen door to the, the opening here. But I thought it'd be kind of neat to add some additional weather stripping in that void, you know, almost like how car doors have double or, or triple seals. I just so happen to have some leftover tailgate seal laying around. It's basically just a piece of EPDM rubber with a bulb attached to it. And it, it actually fits perfectly in my gap. And so I went ahead and did the full perimeter. So now I've got a double seal on my RV door. How about that, right? Okay, well, let me hit the pros and cons. In fact, I'll do the cons first. And really the biggest con for me is that I don't plan on keeping the screen panel attached 100% of the time. And so that means each time that I want to have a screen door, now that my screen door is removed, I've got to attach the screen panel manually. And yeah, that's only a 30 to 60 second process on average, but it is an extra step compared to a conventional screen door that's you know always ready to use. Otherwise, the, the only other con I can think of is that if you're taller like me, I do have to duck just a little bit going out the way the, the slit is with the opening. But again, that's only when I'm actually using the screen panel. So those are really the main cons that I can think of. Certainly let me know in the comments if you can think of other cons. But let's talk about the pros. First is, I love that when I'm not using the screen panel, I've got full access to my door. You know, the handle, the lock, the window view, and then especially the shade itself. I mean, now I can easily lower and raise the window shade, and really that goes for whether I've got the panel installed or removed, but it's definitely nice just having a, a clean look inside without the old screen door in the way. Second pro, I love that the screen panel will close on itself. You know, sometimes I'm going in and out of the RV with food or holding something else. And to know that the screen panel will magnetically close each time, especially when you've got a, a mosquito or a fly infestation at your campsite, I think this is really gonna be handy and help keep the bugs out. And then last pro, I like that everything I've done here can be undone. You know, it's not permanent. I didn't make any new holes or, or damage anything while modifying it, such that it can't be returned back to the original state. 
I mean, I wouldn't have done this mod in the first place if I didn't think I'd like it, but you never know. I might use this setup for a, a few months and maybe my mind will change. So I like that I can undo everything without any changes being permanent. All right, well, that's my screen panel mod. Do me a favor and let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll include links to purchase the products featured in the description below, so I appreciate you using those to support the channel. And if you're watching this and perhaps several months have passed since I published it and you're still on the fence, well, drop me a comment and ask me if I'm still enjoying this mod. As always, thanks for watching.